Hello, CompuMove friends. Welcome to a CompuMove training video. What we have for you today is a look at CompuMove's hourly labor cost allocation function. First, we'll take a look at job cost allocation in general. We'll take a quick look at a transportation commission allocation and see how that appears on job profitability. Then we'll take a look at setting up hourly and mileage cost spaces. We'll look at setting up worker resources per hour for individual workers and equipment resources per mile for individual pieces of equipment. Next, we'll take a look at allocating payroll hours to a job for costing. We'll look at build hours and payroll hours. And then we'll dive into the idea of non-job and lost hours, which are, of course, critical to bridging the gap between hours that are billed to a shipper and what winds up on payroll. Then we'll look at the same thing for equipment miles. And then finally, we'll look at how those values appear in CompuMove. We'll look at individual job record profitability, and we'll also take a look at the big picture view in the job costing report. Finally, we'll have a look at how we can audit the hours that have been allocated against jobs versus our payroll using the daily work events report. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Before we dive into hourly labor cost allocation, let's take a look at how a commission expense allocation would take place. That's not really the purpose of this video. There is a separate video for commissions, but it's such a clean example of how expenses can be allocated against the job that it's a good place to start even though it's not actually what we came here to do. So let's look at this particular set of line items where we've got charges for travel time and for abandoned men. And so we know what our company revenue is. And so now we want to do some allocation. If we were paying commission, we could go to the commission screen. We could say add commission. We could pick a driver. We could say start commission. And we could say perhaps that we're going to pay him 45%. Now, if we go to the profit tab, you'll see that company revenue is showing here. And then we've done a transportation commission allocation, which you can see comes in at 32%. And so here's our total job cost and our job gross net. Now that's so straightforward. It doesn't really present any complications when you're doing commissions. But the point here is that when we're doing hourly labor cost allocations, it's considerably messier because of the difference between what we charge a shipper and what winds up on payroll. So we're going to go to the commission screen. We're going to delete that commission. And then we're going to proceed to go into this job and allocate those hours. A key part of doing that hourly allocation is knowing what our cost basis is. And so that's the first step before we can actually drive this process forward. So I'm going to go to setup and I'm going to go to worker resources. And when we go into an individual worker resource record, you can see that there's a field that says hourly cost basis. Now, this is not someone's hourly wage. This is their total cost to you, inclusive of payroll taxes and benefits and everything else. So it obviously is up to you to determine what that value is. Another thing to know is that when you do cost allocation for a job, it takes the basis that's in effect at that time. So if in the future you change this value, and then we're to go back into a previously entered job, it's going to use the value that was in place at the time that the allocation took place. There's a very similar function if we go into equipment resources. So I'm going to go into setup. I'm going to go back into equipment resources. I'm going to go into straight truck one. And you can see I've got a mileage cost basis of $1.90. And so it's using a similar logic when we go to apply cost except of course workers are allocated by the hour and equipment is allocated by the mile. Now that we've done our background work, let's take a look at applying those labor costs, allocating those labor costs to an individual job record. 
that is done through the scheduling module because you're going to be doing this on a day by day basis. So at the end of the day, or maybe early in the next day, you go through the previous jobs for that day and you're going to bring up the schedule. You're going to have a list of jobs in front of you. I can filter according to jobs that were on an hourly basis. That would be simple enough. And so what I want to do now is zero in on this Dave Smith shipment and apply that hourly cost allocation. So I'm going to double click on it to bring up the job event preview. And you can see here I've got a button that says resource use. And that's where I'm going. So I'm going to click that resource use button and up comes the work event resource use allocation. And so there's a series of columns here that drive exactly how we bridge the gap between what we charge the shipper and what we paid on payroll. So let's work our way through it. The first thing we want to know is how many hours did we pay? Above each one of these columns, paid hours, job hours, non-job hours, and show, so on, is a button. That button is a helper button, a shortcut button. So if, in fact, you paid exactly what was on the schedule, you could click in there and it would drop in those number of hours. We wish it was that simple, but of course it's not. So I'm going to say that we actually paid nine and a half hours on this job. So the next column over is how many hours did we charge the shipper for? So in this case, I'm going to say that we charged the shipper for 7.75 hours. So now we start to address the imbalance. If you look at what's going on over here, this total allocation column is yellow. And that's because it wants us to fully allocate the number of hours that were paid, and we have not gotten there yet. And so the difference, of course, is to be found in these two columns here, the non-job hours and the lost hours. And so the question is, what category does the difference between nine and a half hours and seven and three quarter hours, what category does it fall in? If those were all non-job hours, I could click the helper button, the shortcut button, and it would drop in the 1.75 and then the total allocation would turn green and it turns green because we say we paid nine and a half hours we've decided how it landed and so we're good but in this case of course that's a little too simple for us so we're going to say there was an hour of non-job time you can define that however you wish but i think the classic way to define it would be prep time getting the truck ready folding pads sweeping it out doing safety checks. Those are directly related to this job, but they're not billable to the shipper. So we still have an imbalance. We've got three quarters of an hour we haven't accounted for. And in this case, we're going to say that's lost time. And the scenario I'm going to describe here is suppose the truck was on the way home after the job was completed and there was an accident on the roadway and the truck was delayed. So that's truly lost time but we're responsible for the payroll hours, even if we can't charge the shipper for that, so we've got to put it somewhere, and this is exactly where it goes. So I'm gonna hit Calc Lost, and so it backfills whatever the missing value is, and now we've accounted for all the hours that are landing on payroll. We're paying nine and a half, seven and three quarters is the actual number of hours that we charge the shipper, non-job hours prep time one three quarters of an hour for lost hours now we're actually up to our total allocation nine and a half hours so i've got two guys on this job they were together the whole time so i'm going to say copy all and that will just duplicate that to the to anybody else who was on this job there's also a function to deal with the possibility that you had a crew that finished early and came over to help this crew out, even though they were not originally scheduled for the job. So if I click the Add button here, I can go down to my other workers and I could pick somebody, and then I could do the same procedure for them. Now, if I do that, then it's likely to be a different number of hours. And, but still, it's gotta be accounted for. Obviously, still, we're gonna have payroll. 
I'm not going to carry forward with that, but that function exists because that's an important thing that might happen. The delete button will allow me to remove somebody who I've added if they didn't get originally scheduled on the job. You can't delete a worker who's on the original job allocation. From this screen, you can only delete workers who are add-on workers. So now that we've allocated the hourly labor, let's do exactly the same thing for equipment. It's a similar function, except of course it's mileage based. So if I just want to enter the number of miles here, that's fine. But I've got this convenient odometer calculator. So let's say that my truck had 27,125 miles before the day started. And then it's got 27,175 miles at the end of the day. So that's 50 job miles when I do apply, then it drops the 50 miles in there. I've got a similar ability to apply to job miles. I can have non-job miles or lost miles. That probably would be less common for a piece of equipment. But nonetheless, it's possible that you had a crew go by to pick up a piece of equipment somewhere or something like that. And you'd want to be able to allocate for that so the function is supported there. But nonetheless, what we're looking at in the end is we're looking for green fields. We're looking for that to be green. We're looking for that to be green. So we know that everything that is a cost to us was allocated fully and we're not losing money somewhere and don't know it. There's a little bit of an unrelated function that nonetheless has some value here and that's a tip allocation function. So if people have received cash tips or if it's been added to a credit card suppose somebody gave fifty dollars additional on the job if I hit the calc tip button it'll just split that uh, on a on an even basis between how many different guys are on the job of course if you wanted to change the way it was allocated you're welcome to but it's just a convenient calculator and then that will show up on the hourly payroll report that we're going to run at the end of this video and it'll give you a means at the end of a week or the end of a pay period to capture how much has been provided as tips by shippers so you can work it onto payroll. So we're done with our allocation here. I'm going to click save. And then the next thing we're going to do is open up this job record and have a look at it and see how this landed. So now that we've done that allocation, let's take a look and see what this gets us. I've got the individual job record open in front of me here, and I'm going to go to the aging profit area. And as you can see, we've got this box, which breaks out the detail for our job costing and profit margins. And so what we've got is costs in various categories. You can see here's the labor that we allocated in the previous discussion. You can also see in this shipment, I have also opted to pay a sales permit, sales commission that came in at 5%. There's the per mile equipment allocation that we made that came in at 7%. So that gives us this as our total job cost and there as our job gross net. If we want to look at how the allocations took place for individual work events, we can go back to the home tab or excuse me, the All Events tab, and if you look at the right-hand side here, you can see the breakout of how the cost allocation occurred. Now, it's important to note that being able to see this and also being able to see what comes onto the Profitability tab is controlled by user level because we don't need dispatchers or other operations people looking in here trying to figure out who gets paid more, who gets paid less. Uh, obviously, that's a complication that we're just not interested in, so that's controlled by user level. So once we've looked at it on this individual job by job level, now let's take a look at what we get in terms of reporting options. So I'm going to move this job out of the way and I've got a job costing report up. I have picked an individual day. I've picked a single job type. The other options I've just left the defaults and let's take a look at it. So what we've got here is the same information, but in table form. And in this case, you can see I've got a couple jobs going. So here's our revenue, our costs, our, gro our gross nets with margins, and then our expenses in various categories. There you can see the worker and equipment allocation that we did. And then finally, a set of summary totals across the bottom where we can look at profitability for a group of jobs in a given range of dates. 
So the final thing we'd like to be able to do is compare this back against our payroll to have some way to verify that we haven't lost hours, that there's not hours out there that haven't been allocated somewhere. So I'm going to go back to reports and I'm going to go to the daily work events and I'm going to pick a single day and then down here in the report options, I'm going to pick summary with resources. And since I might be interested in doing some kind of a handout or something with everybody's information on separate pages, so I'm going to say summary versus I'm going to go worker and I'm going to say page separate. And that'll just make a page break when I run this report so people's information doesn't print on top of each other. So now we'll go to display. And so now what we've got here is our individual workers. You can see I've got, because I've picked um, a little bit of a range here, you can see I've got Dave Smith as a shipment showing twice for each driver. And then I've got a subtotal for that driver with the number of paid hours, the job hours, the non-job, the lost hours. And also because we did that tip application, that's actually getting accounted for there. So this allows us, if we were to go to the completely summary view, it would just list each worker and their total hours. And then you could compare the paid hours versus the allocated hours off of this report and try to figure out if you've got any lost time that hasn't been accounted for. So obviously the purpose of all of this is to give us a convenient and flexible and powerful way to bridge the gap between what we pay on an hourly basis for payroll and then what winds up reflecting on individual jobs for their profitability. And then finally the ability to look at a group of them and do our own analysis. So that's enough for this subject for now. I hope that's helpful. As always, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our office. We're always glad to help. And thanks for watching.